this is your first Final Cut Pro tutorial and Final Cut Pro is like iMovie but it's a professional application as opposed to a consumer application. If you look at the interface it looks something like this. You've got an area to keep your files and these are all movie files but you'll have audio files, uh, video files, and you can make um, different sequences and bins. Bins are just uh, folders. And those will be in here. All of your media files are in here. Then you open up your media files in the um, editing area. That's where you can make them longer and shorter. You can set your in points and your out points. Then after you do that, you drag it over here to watch it. That will add it to your actual video and it will show up in the timeline. So once again, your clips are here. You can do different things to them in this window. In this window, you watch your actual video and you can see a linear view of your video, much like uh, iMovie in this part in your timeline. So let's open it up and you may have something like this or you may have more windows. If it looks like this you need to actually start a new project. So let's start a new project. If, you, if it looks like this and it has a whole bunch of things already you need to close that project and do a new project. So you have a new clean area here. You don't want a whole lot of projects opened at once. That can turn into problems really fast. So we need some media. Here, let's import it. Apple I to import is a shortcut. Notice you can also do photos. You can do also um, import whole folders. So let's just go here, import some random movies, and once again it will you can change your format, size, everything else in Final Cut Pro. So like I said, you double click to open it up in your viewer. And here's our clip. We can play it in our viewer. Now we want to set our in and out points. The shortcut for that for in is obviously I, or you can do it manually. So you put your play head here. Manually to do it, you just click on this and that will set your in point. Set your out point, click here, and there you go. Now to get this into your timeline, into your movie, you have a couple options. You have several options. Uh, you can just click here and drag it and we have insert edit, overwrite edit, replace, uh, fit to fill and superimpose so let's just do overwrite that just means we stick it in there and look here it's not quite filling your canvas unlike iMovie which will automatically make it the canvas size uh, Final Cut Pro does not assume you want it to be that size so make sure that you've got in view that you have view image and wireframe if you just view the image you won't get that cross pattern if you just put the wireframe you won't have anything at all so here we have our little wireframe which is the X a bounding box and we have our image so we can easily take that out and you don't have to constrain proportions that the strange thing about Final Cut Pro is you don't have to hold down shift like you would in Photoshop. If you do hold down shift, that will unconstrain proportions. So let's make it the right size. And there we have it in our timeline. Notice here we've got this red line. That means that it has to be rendered 
does not render automatically like it does in iMovie. If we play it, it'll say unrendered. So we have to actually render that. You can either render just this clip, or you could render the whole movie. And you want to go sequence, render all if you want to render the whole movie. It says we have not saved it yet. So let's render it. And make sure we uh, can play it now. There we have it. And now let's save it. And we can save it wherever you want. So we have our first clip. We'll put our playhead here. Remember, we want to double click it. And let's do another, dragging it over, or we can use the little red button. I'll we'll also do an overwrite edit. And there we have it. Let's click on it again, make it the size, fill the whole screen. And there we have it. So now we need to render that one. But. Let's do another one. We need to set in and out points. We did not set in and out points. Oh, we forgot. So, a couple of ways you can do that. You can still do it. Put this one here. But I'm going to do something. Let's get rid of that one. And we can close this gap by holding down Control, click, and close gap. Now we've got two different clips butted up against each other. I want to take the, uh, no, the middle clip. I have several choices. I'll set the in and out point. If I do an insert edit, that will push the clip in front of it to make room for it. If I do an overwrite edit, that will make it so it covers the clip that's in front of it, which we don't want to do. We want to keep that clip. Replace, it's pretty obvious, and just replace that clip in the size. Fill, um, fit to fill. If you have a space, it will fit in exactly that space. But I want to do an insert because I want to push the clip that's in front of it over so that it fits. Now we have three clips. Let's make this one the right size. And there we go. We have three clips. Now, I'd like a little music in there. So we can import music, and let's go somewhere, and let's select some music. Happens to be an AIFF file. We'll double click on that, and here's the waveform here. And so we'll set the out point about there. Put our playhead at the beginning. Once again, we can hit this button, and there we have our music. We have this little rubber banding thing going on here, and we can rubber band now the audio. We can make the audio here. We want it to slowly get louder. Just take this pen tool and click to set our point, and click to set another point, and 
Here we have our audio. If we see that it starts to go into the uh, higher decibels here, if it changes color to a yellow color, that means it's too loud. So we need to take down our general audio where we want, but this audio just happens to be right. So now let's render that. The shortcut for renders, Option R for um, render all or Apple R for render selection. sure to save our work and let's see what our movie looks like okay I would like now this clip to where it changes right there I would like this clip to finish there so I can take the cursor and notice if I put it over in between these it changes to be able to grab it so I'll put it here I'll grab this over and I'll take it like that and I'll put it at the beginning here so then I can take the other clips and I can move them over correspondingly. Let's take the end and move the end like this, move our clips in and there we have the clip where we want the other clip to end and start. So it plays like that. Now we only have a couple more things to do. Let's put a title, or let's put transitions. And so we'll go into effects, and notice we have our effects in little bins or folders. Under the video transitions, I would suggest you only use dissolve filters. I use fade in and out, and across dissolve. Those are the two filters that we'll want to use. Uh, for this one I want it to be actually changed so I'll just take it here we do it. We can just take it and drag it down make sure that it drags onto both clips. It's easy to just put it on one clip. We can then double click it if we have the selection tool. We double click it and then we can actually set here how long we want it to last. Notice we have frames. It's 11 frames. Okay. And we can set it for as many frames as we can. We set it for 15 frames or half a second. There are rel approximately 30 frames per second. Notice once again it turned red up here. Let's elongate it so we can actually see a little better. It turned red up here. That means we, we have to render those that clip. So let's take another one. Let's take a cross dissolve and put it into this one. Then we'll click it and let's make this one a little bit longer. Let's make this one 20 frames. And it just so happens we don't have enough here to make 20 frames. So let's give ourselves a little more space. Why did we do that? We did that because you can only um, take two clips and have them interact as far as the clips last. If a clip does not last longer than the transition, you won't be able to put a transition at that length. 
So let's try it again. Let's double click on that. The cursor. And let's make that one second and a half. And there we go. So we just have to render. So we'll go sequence, render all, or option R. And there we have our first Final Cut Pro movie. So let's play our movie. Okay, a couple things, and this is a matter of, of taste, but I would like my music to kind of fade out slowly, and I'll take it and fade out my video so it's not so abrupt. I'll click here with my pen tool, click at the end and pull it down. That way the clip slowly fades out. It's always a good, good way to either start a sequence or end a sequence. It's a slow fade out, so it's not as shocking to your audience. And there we go. We'll save it again. And it's just a matter of exporting it now. We'll export using QuickTime. And when we get QuickTime, we'll get a window that'll tell us exactly what you want to do. So let's put it at QuickTime Movie. And then we can set it for broadband medium to give us a nice small movie. We'll take it to our folder and call it Final Cut Pro 1 and there we have our first Final Cut Pro movie. When that gets done exporting it's just a matter of making a link from your page and it will open up just like any other file in uh, QuickTime movie format.